Hello and welcome. I'm Michelle Anderson, the founder of Clarinet Mentors, and today I want to show you some products that can really help you take care of your clarinet more easily. Now, some of these really apply just to either wooden clarinets or if you have wooden components like a barrel or bell, it's specifically to help your wooden instruments. However, some of the things I'm going to show you apply to all clarinets, so it's probably worth watching even if you have a plastic indestructible clarinet. Now, I'm actually reviewing the contents of the Bakun Musical Services Wood Care Kit. I just came across this recently and I love the things that are in here. You can get some of them separately, so I thought I'd share with you what's in here and you may be interested in the whole package, or you might find that you just want to get some of the components for your own clarinet. So this is kind of like the unboxing, the unveiling, what's in the kit. So I'm going to open it up and share it with you. There are many interesting things in here that are really good for us as clarinetists. So first of all, there is a clarinet polishing cloth in here. This might seem like a bit of a luxury, and certainly you can function just fine without it. But what it is, is I open it up, it's a cloth that will really help um, preserve the beauty of your clarinet keys, whatever kind of metal you have. Many clarinets have a silver polish, some of them have nickel plating, I should say. Some of them are gold or rose gold, but whatever type of plating you have, that metal can tarnish and it's susceptible to oxidation um, just from the natural chemicals we have on our hands, some people more than others. So if you keep yours in your case, I have to have my clarinet case right here, just on top of your clarinets, every time you finish playing, just give them a quick wipe down. It only takes, you know, another 10 seconds and leave it in your case and that way your um, keys just stay looking cosmetically very nice. It probably doesn't affect a whole lot the sound of the instrument, but it's your clarinet. You love it, you want it to look nice, it's a nice thing to have. All right, the next thing I am pulling out of my care kit here, this is a really cool gadget. Regardless of whether you have a plastic clarinet, a wooden clarinet, a you name it, a clarinet, I don't know, made out of bubble bath or something. This is called the Fix-It Tool, and I love this accessory. I think it's everyone should have one in their case. It's small enough to fit in most cases, has a little loop here. Um, basically, this is a two-part tool, depending upon which end I unscrew. So, the end I just unscrewed is a little screwdriver. It's the perfect size for most of the screws that we find on our clarinet. For some mysterious reason, from time to time, our screws just come loose. And, you know, if you take a quick glance at your instrument, in particular, every joint where we have kind of a ball at the end of it, like at the end of this rod, there's a screw going into the end. Those are not meant to be super tight. If they're too tight, they can restrict the key movement. So for that reason, when your clarinet technician is setting up your clarinet, they'll be in there snugly, but not super tight. And over time, they can wiggle loose. And if you see it coming loose, you can lose them, um, in which case eventually a key might fall off. Or if they're loose, the keys might not be closing properly. So in which case, this little screwdriver is perfect size to adjust that. The other end of this tool is very handy. I used to use an old uh, crochet hook, but this is much more portable. It's called a spring hook. There's a little notch here and the springs on our clarinet, you probably most of the time don't have to worry about them very much, but on every one of our big keys, if we look underneath it, there's a little piece of metal that um, allows that to push down and spring back up again. It's the springs that really help our mechanisms. And usually they're just a, a piece of wire that hooks onto a notch under your clarinet. From time to time, they come loose. This little hook will just help you reach in and guide it back into its place really easily. If you have fancier spring repairs than that, you probably want to take it to your technician, but if you have a key that's suddenly flopping around and not closing, usually it's because the spring has simply fallen off of its post and it's very easy to reattach it to where it's supposed to go. So, very, very handy. You may not need it very often, but when you do, 
it's way easier than trying to do it with a screwdriver, which is what I've ended up doing when I didn't have the right tool for the job. Other things here in our clarinet care kit. Here's something that I really recommend to all of my students, and I invite you to consider it as well. Of course, you probably have a swab for cleaning your clarinet. Um, I think that there are two wooden clarinet care kits, and the deluxe one comes with the silk swab. That's what I've opened here. Their standard one does have a nice uh, cloth swab, but I really like silk swabs in my clarinet for a few reasons. The main one is I've never gotten a silk swab stuck inside my clarinet. You all know there's that little post inside our register key where things get stuck. And I've seen, you know, nightmares, oboist clarinetists, where in the middle of a concert someone is swabbing and gotten it stuck and not able to get out. And then you're in trouble because you have an instrument that you basically can't play. Um, I had a colleague once who got her swab stuck in her B-flat clarinet, had an A clarinet out, picked it up, and did this incredibly hard clarinet solo on it, but she had to be transposing a semitone on site. And she did it really well. I don't know how she did it. When it was finished, she said, I'll never be able to do that again. That was some kind of miracle. Personally, I don't want to put myself in that position. So a silk swab, I suppose it can get stuck, but it rarely does. And they are also machine washable. You should clean your swabs every month or so and uh, just because they do pick up grit and cork grease and stuff that you don't necessarily want in your clarinet so keep them clean but personally if you don't have a silk clarinet swab i would highly recommend that you try one whatever kind of clarinet you have i think it's going to make your life a little bit easier this kit also comes with a very small looks like a piece of paper here it's an anti-tarnishing strip so I mentioned earlier that we want to wipe the oils and such that come off of our hands off of our clarinet with a polishing cloth. This is just something that also helps prevent chemical reactions in your case. So the polishing cloth will help reduce tarnish on your clarinet. This helps it even more. And all you do is just put it in your clarinet case and let it work its magic. Very handy to have. So. That would work on any kind of clarinet. We all have metal keys, or at least we should have metal keys on our clarinet. All right, reaching into the goodie bag further. This is just a handy tool. It's basically a mascara wand, but we call it a cleaning brush. There are lots of times um, if we haven't paid much attention to our tone holes, the holes that our hands and fingers cover up, that we get dust and debris in there. And cleaning those out can actually make those individual notes. Let's say I'm playing an E, my thumb and first finger. That next open hole down, if it's got gunk in there, old court grease or who knows what, pieces of an old cloth swab in there, the note won't speak as clearly as it ought to. And this just cleans it out. I think it's a handy tool to have. These ones, I believe Mori Bakun recommends that you get the disposable ones, use them a bit, and then replace them so that you're not reusing the gunk and grime on them. Technically, they are washable to some extent, um, but it's nice to have one that comes with the case. I do recommend you clean out your tone holes from time to time. Next in my kit of goodies here, this is unique to wooden clarinet parts, but very important, and I love that what they've done is created an almond oil blend, just the perfect kind of oil for clarinet wood. You certainly uh, can get almond oil in a natural food store. Usually they only come in large containers, so this is a nice size. Um, we oh, Vegetable oil like almond oil only lasts for about a year or so. We want to keep it in a dark place to help it last longer, but this is a great size because it's not going to go to waste. I highly recommend, especially if you live in a climate where a furnace turns on in wintertime and the air gets drier, that you oil your wooden clarinets from time to time. Um, a visual clue that your clarinet may need oiling is if you take a look at the wood grain and you just start to see, I'm not going to call them cracks, 
but lines in the wood where it seems to be opening up a little bit deeper. You can also, um, if it looks shiny, your wood is usually got its natural oil working well, but if it's kind of dull looking, it's another sign, it might be ready for oiling. Sometimes you can just feel it and it might just feel kind of rough instead of smooth. To be safe, a lot of people recommend you oil your clarinets when the seasons change. Now if you live somewhere with no season, use your equinoxes and solstices because they happen four times a year. That's a good reminder. I'm going to just quickly show you how you can oil a clarinet because it's super easy to do. What you want to do is have a swab that's your dedicated clarinet oil swab. So I have an older cotton one that I use. I'm using it in the comfort of my own home so if it gets stuck I have time to unstick it. But we want to put um, about, no, you don't need a lot of oil, a little bit goes a long way. I'm going to say maybe um, six drops or so on my swab. I just got a good little squirt there. And I'm going to kind of with my hands work this oil in so that uh, it's covering a large patch of my swab. And then I'm going to run it through my clarinet. And we don't want to get the oil on the pads of our clarinet, on other sections of it, but right through the inside of the clarinet. I'm going to run it through the bottom of my clarinet, and what this will do is just cover part of the clarinet with oil. Now, I probably didn't get all of it, so really all you need to do is simply run it through maybe five or six times, and then consider your clarinet oiled. I'll, I'll do the other four or five times once I turn off my camera here, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to oil it. So, uh, even if you just have a wooden barrel, and by the way, if you're playing a plastic clarinet and you're not feeling quite ready to upgrade to a full wooden instrument, I highly encourage you to just try out a wooden barrel on your clarinet. I've had students with plastic bar you know, plastic instruments who put on the wooden barrel and if it's the right match for you and your mouthpiece, it can make your plastic clarinet sound almost as good, maybe even indistinguishable from some of the intermediate wooden clarinets. It makes a huge difference. Really nice investment. And if you have a wooden clarinet and you just have the barrel that came with it, I'm sure it's fine, but some of the fancier barrels that are out there that maybe maybe different kind of wood like coca-bola wood um, or a slightly different cut might just give you a more open warm flexible sound uh, or richer darker they have all sorts of fun qualities it's worth trying um, I do recommend that for you and the oil will help the barrels as well personally I find and I don't know if this is true for everybody but I love coca-bola barrels and bells to me, the coca bola oil seems, the coca bola wood seems to dry out a bit faster than my black grenadilla wood. So I find that I oil my barrels maybe a little bit more often than every three months, and I just keep an eye on it and look for signs of it drying out. All right, back to the care kit here. Oh, here's a really cool thing. Um, this is called the Boveda Two Way Humidity Control Pack and it's 49%. Um, I have one that's already open here in my clarinet case. This is really helpful for wooden instruments. One of the things that can cause trouble with the wood is it either dries out too much or it goes through sort of a wet dry cycle of expanding and contracting. And it's better for the clarinet to stay at a fairly constant humidity. So putting one of these in your case, it just again sits in your clarinet case will help regulate the humidity. Um, you can buy packs of these. I think I've bought some on Amazon. It's handy that you get one in the care kit. Um, they last for about three months. So what you do is date it. This one I put in my case on September 5th. Sits in there. Um, that one is going to need replacing soon. Probably another couple weeks I will put in a new one. Maybe this one that just came in my Bakun wooden care kit. Anyway, just keep it in your case. Even if you just have a barrel, it's really good for the wood to have that kind of quality control. All right, I'm almost through the contents of my goodie bag here. There is some cork grease. Now, probably everyone has cork grease, and you might be thinking, wow, that's not much. And true, 
we do need court grease. However, one thing I will say, there are some court greases that are not good for your corks. They actually rot the corks away over time. And higher quality court grease will um, have more natural oils in them, less chemicals. And most reputable clarinet manufacturers, whether it's Bakun or a Selmer or a Van Doren or you know, you name it, Buffet, are going to have good quality cork greases in their instrument. But um, there's a lot of mass-produced, inexpensive cork grease. You tend to find it more in the student model rental fleet that will certainly grease the corks, but over time it damages them. So it's worth having good cork grease. Um, I recommend something like this. Another one that I really like, I'll just grab off my case, is the Doctor's Product Clarinet uh, Cork Grease. There's, you just want to have a good one in your case. And every now and then you actually want to strip it off of your corks and um, put fresh stuff on again. Uh, over time, the cork grease, even if it's high quality, just gets a little bit gummy and rancid and that's when it can start damaging the cork or the glue underneath the cork so the cork will fall off at inconvenient moments. You can take makeup remover. Uh, there's lots of just go into your local drugstore makeup department and find some of the um, makeup remover that you know comes in a bottle, you shake it up, put it on a cotton swab, wipe your corks clean and then put on a fresh layer of cork grease and do that maybe every month or two just to kind of help keep your corks in good working order. Alright, I'm almost through this pack. The last two things are just nice things to have. A notepad and a pencil. Of course we should always have a pencil with us to take to our rehearsals and write lovely things in our music. Um, this notepad, what I like about it is it has a clarinet, um, kind of like a fingering chart in it. So if you're ever, I'm going to grab a darker pen here, if you're ever at a workshop or something and you see a really cool fingering, like wow that's a really neat fingering for Altissimo A, you can pencil it on. Here's an example. There is, in my videos, if you've watched some of my videos on better clarinet tone, there's a fingering I love to recommend to people. I call it the embouchure tester to see if their fingers and error are on the right track. So as an added bonus, I will show it to you at the end of this video. There is my notebook. You can see, looking at my little chart, I've got thumb register key, first two fingers on the left hand, first two fingers on the right hand, and let me just get my read in place. Um, thumb, first finger, second finger, leaving the third finger off, two more fingers. This is a really bad fingering for high G sharp. It doesn't like to speak well. It likes to squeak and it likes to get a weird undertone. If you can get it to sound like a G sharp, it's a really good sign that your air and embouchure are on the right track. If it squeaks, which it squeaks really easily, might be a sign that you're biting down and that you need to round the corners of your mouth and open your jaws wider. If you get a lower sound, it's a really good indication your air is not moving fast enough and you need to get faster air. I have other videos on YouTube that will give you pointers on how to do that well. Thank you for watching today. And if you're not part of the Clarinet Mentors community, totally free to join. Go to learnclarinetnow.com and join in. From time to time I host live clarinet events with guest artists, question and answer sessions, um, sharing fun clarinet gear like I found today with you. And it's just a great place to learn and share things. There's no cost to join. would love to have you in my community. Thanks for watching today's video and I look forward to seeing you on an upcoming clarinet video.